Welcome to the Sengoku Studies channel. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the monthly 2024 Samurai Weapons Collaboration. Any videos by other contributors for this month will be linked in the description and added to the playlist. Also, please consider checking out the channels of the contributors on screen now, which will also be linked in the description. The weapon I will be talking about this month kind of follows along with my video from last month on the Uyumi, as I will be covering another what could be called piece of artillery. This month it is the Hoseki, or a Japanese version of what could be called a catapult. It is known by other names as well, but I will be using Hoseki for this video. The term hoseki means something like rock hurler, rock flinger, rock thrower, something like that. But it is different than the personal infantry kind of rock thrower, sort of like a Japanese version of a sling called the furizunbai, which I previously covered in a short. In modern Japanese, this term is used for a variety of weapons, both eastern and western, that could be classified as catapults or trebuchets. The first mention of such a weapon is in the Taiheki, a military tale, or Gunki Monogatari, which spans the years 1319 to 1367. The source is fictionalized and highly exaggerated and romanticized. However, the inclusion means that it is likely they were at least somewhat known of, at least among some circles, by the time the tale's compilation was completed, which is thought to have been in the late 14th century. Their use is mentioned sporadically until the sieges of Osaka, Osaka no Jin or Osaka no Eki in the early 1600s. So, how were they operated? They were operated off of direct manpower, rather than stored energy. This means they did not use tension or counterweight to launch the projectile. On one end of the arm was a pouch and some rope, like a large version of a sling. This was where the projectile was loaded. On the other end of the arm, a rope or ropes were connected. The crew would pull either down on those ropes or back in the opposite direction that the projectile would go. This would raise the arm up and then launch the projectile. There were various projectiles that could be used. Of course, plain old stones could be used as ammunition. In addition, incendiary and explosive weapons could be fired at the enemy. Using ropes to be pulled rather than a large amount of stored energy limited the power that could be delivered more so than those other methods. This meant that the weight of the projectile as well as its range were also more limited, but it did increase its rate of fire. In addition, until the late 16th century, most of the so-called castles were wooden fortresses rather than the types of castles we think of in Japan today, and they were typically located on a hill or mountain, hence the name Yamajiro. This location, along with the various defenses, made it difficult for an attacking army to get within range to use the Hoseki. They were sometimes used to attack buildings and structures, and they are recorded being used in such a manner during the Onin War of 1467 to 1477. That was within the city of Kyoto though, on fairly level ground. The majority of the scant records of their use implies that they were typically used as anti-personnel weapons. Launching the projectiles in the field could cause casualties, but especially disruption. However, Hoseki were extremely expensive, required large crews depleting manpower, and once in place they were not very maneuverable. These are some of the factors as to why their uses were limited, and why Japan did not seem to really develop or implement much in the way of artillery or siege engines prior to the later 16th century and the proliferation of gunpowder weapons. This does not mean there were none though. As I have shown the last couple months and my previous video last year on naval warfare, there were some artillery and artillery-like weapons used in Japan before then. However, in many cases they are a rarity among the extant records, documents, and artifacts. This can lead them to being overlooked as a part of pre-modern Japanese warfare. Even if they were rare, they did exist and they were used. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you found it informative. And a special thank you to my Patreon member, Coulter Nebel. If you liked the video and would like to support the channel, please consider leaving a like, sharing, commenting, and possibly subscribing. Also, please check out the other creators mentioned at the beginning of this video linked in the description. Links to any video for this month will also be in the description. If you want to follow me on social media, those links will be there as well. I hope that you will join me again for the next video. Otsukare sama deshita.